All right, R&B fans, you are now tuned in to R&B Nights, where R&B is the school, not old school. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. At all. At so all. this is uh, this is Dre speaking you to from Shy Town, as you can see with my uh, my virtual background representing the Shy. All day, all day. And this is T O Double D, Ty One right here, uh, shouting out uh, by way of uh, Chicago, but I'm here in uh, Memphis, Tennessee, right now. M Town, what it do? What it do? Mm-hmm. Winchester, what y'all up to? <laughs> I don't know. Might be some bullets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Just say. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, that's that's another conversation. <laughs> that situation it ain't the Winchester we know. No, no. Ooh, man, don't get me started. Anyway, right, right, anyway. So, what we're here to talk about tonight is we want to get into the chaos thing, and right, specifically, right. we want to talk about the music. What do we do with the music? What are we supposed to do with the music? What are we allowed to do with the music? Right, right, so, right. Um, just to kick it off, we obviously are all aware of um, uh, Kale's um, being found guilty on those charges. Um, as I said before, I really want to keep it about the music and not really trying to go too much off into his actual charges, but we know he was found guilty and it's not looking good. So we are reasonably looking at the the um, the idea of, of not getting any more music from this man, and uh, and you know if he um, you know he, he did the crime, you got to do the time. So it is what it is. But again, with the music that's left, uh, we know that there has already been some banning, or if you will, of his music. Um, I think Spotify doesn't stream the. Uh, singles or the music itself, but the catalog is still available on the website. Uh, I know YouTube removed uh, two of the R. Kelly channels, the R. Kelly Vivo channel, um, and another one I can't remember. So, um, you know, there obviously have been some repercussions musically from what from the fallout of what took place. So with that being said, for those of us that grew up with his music, that love the music, but obviously also understand the severity of what he did. What are we supposed to do with the music? How is it supposed to work? Interesting question, man. I, um, I go back and forth with this several, several, you know, so many times throughout the day. And it's just like, how do you, how do you unlearn it? Mm. If you've been listening to it for this long, like, like us, you know, we're talking about what, three decades. How mm-hmm. do you take that? That, that, that volume of music that you know and remove it. Um, for me, that's next to impossible. Let me just be, I just gotta be honest. That's, it's just really hard to do. I almost feel like it's like me telling my mom or my dad, um, forget you ever knew the temptations. <laughs> mm. You know, and again, it's, Again, I'm not taking up for him. I don't want to put that out there. I don't want to come off that way. But right. again, the question was, what do we do with the music? And for me, I say, let the music play as it plays. You don't have to go out your way to play it, but you also don't have to go out your way to deny it because it's the music. We got to be able to separate those two things, in my opinion. Which brings up the age old question as it pertains to these types of things and uh, entertainers in general, which is how do you go about separating the art from the person? And obviously, in theory, this shouldn't be difficult to do because they should be able to stand uh, individually in in their own areas and in own respects. But that's not actually it's not practical. It's, It's just not the way we work. Uh, when things happen, we have feelings about it. Those feelings bleed over into different things and can create biases and perceptions, um, preferences, whatever you want to call it. So one of the biggest, I guess, things I'm trying to grapple with is I still see when everything, whenever we post anything, uh, Kale's related, even from a musical standpoint on the site or any of the platforms, there's always a huge conversation as to whether or not he should be still getting any shine at all. 
So now going back to the separating the art from the uh, from the person question, if I'm playing the music, if I, am I giving him shine or am I enjoying the the art that he provided? Yeah, I, I, I'd like to be able to think that we are sophisticated of an, enough of an audience to be able to separate that, to be able to say, OK, um, I play his music and it's just the music. You know, I, I love the music. I grew to the music. I think we can just, you know, look at that as, again, just the music. Mm -hmm. But when I intentionally take in all of the other things that's going on and kind of add that into the music, yeah, you may think of, well, I don't know if I want to play it because of that. But again, the music, when you, when you, let's just be honest, when you're listening to this music, you're not thinking about this other stuff, at least not right away. It's, it's music that you've been listening to for so long, you just listening to the music. I mean, R. Kelly, the man, he could be as gross as they come. Mm -hmm. But if I'm being honest, he's got some of the greatest music I've ever heard. So that's just, that's just that. So now, do we find any, any validity in if you continue to keep diving down in the specificity of the specific songs you may choose to continue to listen to. Mm -hmm. So while I, I agree with what you just said um, in theory and on principle at a surface level, I do feel like, and I have, I can say, I think I felt it myself at times as well. Maybe some of the more overtly sexual songs oh, sure. absolutely, are, absolutely. are a little harder to, to digest. Oh, yeah. uh, now, obviously in the rear view of everything that just went down, right. but a song like Sadie, um, heart of a woman. Um, oh my God. I mean, obviously the dude's catalog is, is a mile long. I, so I, I believe I can fly. It wasn't all sexual. So does that I count wish. for anything? Does that count for anything? The ones that weren't sexual? Is that okay? It has to, because let's face it. Some of these kids that were um, graduating high school or, or grade school in, say, 1999, 2000, they walked down the aisle on his song. They walked to get their diploma on, I believe I can fly. Mm. So how do you take that away from them? When you, you know what I'm saying? Like when you start to like really realize that his music, it, it went so far past the, the charges and things of that nature. It was the music and people right. only knew to take the music, even though, you know, again, we understand just how bad some of these things were that he had, had done and stuff like that. Again, the music serves its own purpose. And I think it needs to be, you know, put in its category as such. Because, again, it's just, it was art. It was the art that he did at the time, and he wasn't, um, he wasn't found guilty on charges at that time. Right. So we could only judge based on what we had in front of us at that time. So now, you know, with what we know now, I can see how it would give some people some pause about playing it. But, again, it goes back to my point. Well, you don't have to deliberately say, um, I, I just want to play it to be a, a combative or uh, I'm gonna play it just um, to 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 say that I'm um, I'm going against the grain, but play it as it needs to be played. You know what I'm saying? Like you come on the radio and you you know it's a, oh it's a song that you remember you like. You know it it, it makes you want to turn it turn it. You know, but if you, you want to listen to it, listen to it. But my thing is don't don't take don't take it out on somebody else that they want to play it or that they don't want to play it. You know what I'm saying? Let it be what it needs to be for you. Right. So because. Uh, Generally speaking, when in these types of situations, it's usually a um, almost like a cool off period, and and then suddenly right. you know everything is cool again. So hypothetically, if you was going to throw out a window of time that we should have be on R. Kelly light, or even if you want to call it a ban, the conditions of this being once the ban is served, it's all access again. It's 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 one hundred again. So if you could set a window of time around that to say, we're going to let this cool off and marinate, how, what would you think? Oh, that's an interesting question right there, man. Um, that's a good one. Um, 
Because organically, that happens a lot where time just passes and people mm -hmm. just tend to move on from whatever it was and get back into the art. The the further away that memory gets from from them or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. obviously, it's it's difficult to pinpoint a specific amount of time. But if you had to throw one out there, oh man, um, I almost don't know how to answer that because, and again, if I'm being honest, and that's what R and B nights is, we. We coming from the true art of what this thing has provided for us. Mm -hmm. um, at times, I you know I could be the wrong person to ask in that. What a, a couple years, you know, two three years, because again, at this, let's face it, right now he's not being played a lot right now. So part of the healing time to me has already started, true, in true. my opinion. So. Right. Time served has actually been taking place. Already. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's, you know, I almost feel like, again, that, and then for his sake, you know, barring some miracle, Kells is, is done. So, you know, what difference does it do now if, you know, if you play the music two, three years down the line? I mean, the, you know, the damage that he did, you know, and again, it, it happened and that's unfortunate, but based on the courts, it happened. So, you know, two, three years down the line, if it, the, music, the music is playing, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know that it's a problem. You know, um, I know a lot of people, you know, will catch a lot of heat for that saying that because some people just cancel, cancel, cancel. Mm -hmm. But if I'm being honest, that's BS in a, in a lot of ways because the man provided three decades of music. Three, and I don't, I'm not talking about no basic music. I'm talking about being the number one guy. Right. You know, your favorite artist, favorite artist. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, come, you know, let's be, let's just be real about it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it, it, it happened. It's unfortunate. And I really do mean it. It's unfortunate. But the music, we got to separate it, man. We just do. It's too much. And it was too good. So for, because I, um, I browse a lot of the comments um, when people, when we do post that material and people make their comments, I do browse it and check it out to kind of test the temperature and see where people at. Right. right. Um, and I see a lot of sentiment that almost feels like um, just based on what he did and kind of like how long you could almost say we protected him or looked the other way, whatever you want to call it. Do we now have a responsibility that now that justice, quote unquote, has been served, do we now have a responsibility to maintain a certain mentality about him to protect our black women or of an honor of our black women in terms of what they went through? And again, the way we cognitively or however you want to look at it, look the other way for a long damn time. True. True, true. We all um, got an uncle like Hells. We all knew somebody yeah, on do. the block like Hells, man. We and we, and we, we still we, know him right now. Mm -hmm. and a lot of yeah. us grew up thinking that was just the thing to be doing. And that was just, you know, OG such and such. You know, he like him young, whatever you, whatever we said to, to try to make it okay at the moment. But, you know, we've been co-signing that for a second now on the low. True. On the low. That's true. That's true. Um, So many people, even the alleged victims, look the other way on this. So, you know, that said, it's almost like um, as much as we want to protect our black women, which I feel like we do have that responsibility for sure, you know, um, at the same time, I want us to all also be fair because, you know, it's one of those things where, okay, um, he did this or he did that. Um, let's just, throw him under the bus and under, you know, for this or for that. And, and, and I, and I agree as we should, when it comes down to certain things, but at the same time, let's start to be a little bit more real and also have a little bit more accountability within ourselves as well. Cause I don't like to just, and again, with these young girls and stuff like that, zero tolerance, off limits, no question, but my God, parents, mothers, fathers of these particular young women mm. how man how does how does and, and again i'm not trying to even get so much to the trial but it's like how does something like this happen yeah, yeah. if i'm still living i got three girls let's be clear mm -hmm. 
It ain't a hell that you can keep you can put in front of me to keep me from that. It, it, it ain't one. Should anybody mess gonna, with your girls? Yeah. It don't matter. Oh, on on a hey, on on GP, that's done. They gotta Dude. write that with you, shooting uh, and stabbing. And, and you know and I'm gonna what be right I'm side, by just, side That's it, side stabbing. by side. And it's like, man, like, and again, I'm not accusing him. I don't want to come up that way, but it's like, come on, y'all. Like, man, if if he is a this or that, or you know, a predator or whatever, whatever. Then there's so many people, obviously, in the corner of those people that this allegedly happened to, that should should be able to protect and kind of also pose some sort of defense or hedge around them so that stuff like this don't keep happening. Because these charges went on for a long time, a long time. So it's like, man, you know, it just, you know, all at all times I want to protect, you know, women, no question. Mm-hmm. No, you know me, you know I love the women in my family, the women in my circle a great deal. Right. But I also want to also want to say is, hey y'all, let's stop putting ourselves in these positions too. Because again, no matter the celebrity, no matter who this person is or, or she is, they're still human. They do bad things, they do wrong things, they make mistakes. So it's like, you know, let's also do as much as we can to prevent mm-hmm. some of these things. Because again, we we've been around this music game. And we've seen a lot of stuff. The things that people are willing to do to get next to a celeb, like, man, like, Mm -mm. come on, man. Like, and that's almost really, that's not almost, that is the primary reason. (sighs) I knew it was going to be difficult to even have this conversation, even from a musical level. Because it's impossible for it not to overlap into the actual scenario itself. And then for some level of analysis to be done. And then it's, it is very difficult not to come to the same conclusion. Like what's going on with the parents in the house. And that branches off into a whole nother conversation that obviously would take us completely off track. Exactly. Um, but, and that's, I, I guess, to be honest, that's one of the things that's kind of tied into this subject as a whole is that it's so layered and there's so much nuance and context to it. And some of that context being things we didn't check com- from a community standpoint as a people, um, that that's context that goes into it. And now when you try to, I guess, pull all of that context out and do the math and come up with an equation that says what we're going to do with the music, it's a little muddle. It's not very easy. It's not an easy problem. This is some like pie shit right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it's going on and on and on. Man, like yeah, and I'm. It's it's so layered because it's such a cultural thing with us. Mm-hmm. And again, I can't speak on nobody else's culture, but like you said before, I'm not saying that we thought it was the the end thing or anything like that. But we were well aware of different situations like this in black families and black households. And it was not right. It was wrong. No question. But for me to say to actually say that R. Kelly in some kind of way, and I'm not defending him. I'm just pointing out the facts. In a lot of cases, we do become products of our environment. Mm-hmm. You can repeat cycles. In most cases, not, not even just a lot. In most cases, yeah. In most cases, you know, and and again, being in similar circles. You heard a different story. You did, mm-hmm, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's like, you know. Right. If it, you in the side, you've been here in the side, you've been hearing this forever in a day. But man. forever in a day. Forever so, you know, day, and, you and might again, have saw it depending on where you was. If you called him in the right spot, you might have saw it too. So. I, ain't, I ain't saying no places, but <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but hey, man. But, yeah, it, it, and it's just the truth, man. But again, to the music, though. I mean, if we can be honest, man, if you love R&B and let's say 90s R&B and even into the 2000s, I know you're not walking around here saying that you don't love this dude's music. It's not that's, possible. And that's the more like the conversation that I would really prefer to have, even like when I'm having that conversation in general, is the musicianship. Like, I I can... <sighs> I get it. I really do. But if if it's possible, if it's possible to separate the two, is there not something to be said for this level of musicianship? 
It is, absolutely. But I'm wondering with these comments and different things that I hear, I don't know if we're able to separate. I've yet to see much that pulls me in that, that on that side of, yeah, we can separate the two. I don't see that as much. In some cases I do, but in a lot of cases I don't. You know, it's like, oh, okay, well, he did this, he did that, he did this. Oh, let's try to, you know, put all this music in the garbage can with him. Mm-hmm. Come on, y'all, that's not, can't do that, man. I mean, it's, I can see if he wasn't such a big artist. You're talking about right, right. R. Kelly. This dude, I mean, he could probably do what? A four or five hour concert without repeating the same song twice. Right. It's the hey, catalog. Easy. It's the catalog and the quality. And I guess I just said the musicianship of um and if we want to be honest, the genius of, of musical genius of what we're talking about. We can say that. That's that's because that's true. This wouldn't be half as hard if we was talking about trying to like cancel Rome or some shit. I'm just saying. I mean, hey, and <laughs> hey, look, man. I'm just saying. This, this would not be the tug of war it is now. Hey, shout out to Rome, man. We, we, Rome, just saying, though, man, you know. Right, it's right, all right. right, right. Yeah, hey, he know, represented yeah. in the 90s, so. Um, and man, Jimmy Cozier, man, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, we ain't, you know, it's not canceling them. It's, it's R. Kelly, though, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, man. I mean, they, they serve their purpose. You know, they wasn't part of R&B. You got to include them, you know. But <sighs> canceling them and canceling R. Kelly is, I don't know. I don't really know that you can do it, man. You're going to stumble up upon some of R. Kelly's music some way, somewhere, somehow. It's that much. That much. So, <laughs> side note, man. I ain't, I, I'm still not trying to be facetious, man. But this is... Never, never that. Never, yeah, never that. that. I ain't trying to do that. But... Uh, <laughs> So, because of how highly we regard the 90s and the game and what it was at the time, if you got in the game and dropped a joint, and even if it was a one-hit type of situation and it was successful, um, from an artist standpoint, because I know Jimmy Cozier did a lot of writing for other people as well. Right. But if, if you in that room, Jimmy Cozier's uh, category, and you got off one good one in this prime time situation, era of music should i say are you then like uh, Corey benjamin on the 98 bulls or something or are you do you get like you know i'm just saying like because you know you was on you was part of the squad you might yeah, not yeah. Have, you know contributed a lot or put it down like that but you you was part of the squad so like do you get like residual respect because you put it down in the 90s even though it was hey, like well um Let's, well, here's the thing. Not every R&B enthusiast was like, say, me and you. Mm-hmm. They wasn't buying everything like we were. That's true. So they may have missed you. So it's not like, you know, they may not give you no credit because they may not have even really known that you existed. That's true. But now, again, now, wrong with, you know, that song, you know, he got he got airplay with it. Let's just be let's be clear. He got oh, facts, airplay. facts, facts. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, I don't remember anything else but that, you know. So it's easy to kind of step over him and not even give him that credit or that pass that he was in the night. Even though we know he was, there gonna be a mm-hmm. lot of people like, Whoa, what was that? Hmm. And to be fair, for as long as I've um I mess with a single. I fuck with a single. I ain't even front. But it's for as long as I have been kind of like uh, uh, lightly ribbing him, you know, in our conversations or whatever. The reality of the fact, though, is I ain't never listened to the whole album. I, I don't know what the whole Rome project sound like. He might have had I some burners on there. Oh, what was it? I bought it. Was it decent? I don't really right, know. Man, I ain't even trying to go off. <laughs> I ain't even trying to do this to Rome. We getting off track. I ain't trying to do yeah, that. Yeah, man, but you know, it, I, I mean, but it's it's hard to. I want to get all these cats to love because they 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 uh they added to what we know to be nineties music. So you give them that love because I'll be honest with you, um, Jimmy's joint. You know, I I still will bang that right now. Oh yeah, 
Um, and that's the crazy thing about it. All bullshit aside, for as much as I might kid or, or talk shit or whatever about anybody that I felt like was a one hit wonder, whatever the case may be, the fact of the matter is that that one hit they had at that moment still fade probably 80% of the shit that's going on right now. Facts. 100%. Easily. 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 So, all right, back to the chaos thing. Um, another thing that I had noticed, and I had, um, I think I was watching an interview with um, Selena Johnson. Uh, shout out Thorn Ridge. Shout out, um, classmate. What's going on, girl? Facts. Um, she had mentioned how she had um, stopped performing the uh, R. Kelly song that he produced for her, I think, which was I Am Your Woman, um, for a while. And then she decided to, because she had been doing a lot of touring over in, uh, a lot of performing over in Africa, in South Africa, um, she decided, um, and I'm paraphrasing, I could be wrong, but I, I, the gist of what I got was that she decided for herself that the strength within the song was worth more than whatever, you know, flack she might have got for performing the song. Um, when she went out of town to do these engagements or what have you. So to me, that brings up the question for another aspect of Kells and his catalog, because obviously we know he produced and wrote a gang of stuff for a lot of people. Man. So what obligation does that put on the artist if you received a Kells gem that ended up becoming one, like one of your biggest hits of your career? Are you supposed to stop performing that? Um... Well, I think the society would say, yeah, they want you to. Um, but some artists can't do that because that was their brand one. Right. And they spent money. You know, their label spent money for Kales to do that song. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you just want them to take an L in that investment because it was also an investment. Right. So, you know, but again, if, you're being, if we're being fair, you know, if he is that awful of a person, and you want to let it bleed over into the music, then I feel like then everybody should drop the music. If, if, if we're going with the consensus right now or what it looks to be. Well, just, it's a curious subject to me because that, that makes me think about um, a change in faces or um, JS. Uh, JS, who was almost primarily produced by uh, Kales. Like if you had so much of your material or so much of your hits, so many of your hits were produced by him, According to society, you kind of ass up right now. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. You working that Kroger or Jewel? You know if if you know if they man if they cut that out. I mean, like he did a lot, and he gave a lot of people number ones. Right, he did right. some good stuff. So if you telling them, I, I man, I got to counsel him or whatever, and that's my breadwinner. I don't know how I'm thinking about that. Cause I am, I am, I spent money. That was part of my budget, and maybe probably eighty percent of my budget. Right. So I don't mean because Kale didn't come cheap. So I don't know. That's a difficult decision, and that's the reality of it. Is probably the vast majority. I want to say of the production he probably did was for bigger artists um, that could afford to maybe exclude his one song. It might not have right. been a huge hit for their uh, catalog or for their performance. But if you talk about again, like the, uh, the JS or changing faces or say like in phase that had that one joint um, hold right. me or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What do you do with that? Those scenarios, those are just, those are interesting to me. Um, Obviously, to each his own, and however they feel about it, and want to continue to perform it, just up to them. But I just find that an uh, interesting dynamic within this that even if he produced for you, you have a decision to make, and that's just that's crazy to me. That's, that's, that's crazy. And I, I will say this: I would love to hear what the general public response to something like that would be. Like, if you ask, if you po if we pose the question, what do you feel about artists that Kale's work with? Should the music that he did with them, for them be canceled as well because he's canceled? How does, you know, what's that dynamic? How does that work? Because again, a lot of music for a lot of the people. That will be an R&B post uh, question on Facebook. Um, yeah, maybe tomorrow we might post that. Because I really would like to hear how people feel about that. Like, his music yeah. in and of itself, I get. But like you said, if you... Um, or like we're talking about, if you produced a fire-ass joint for 
somebody that this is pretty much the only reason they getting booked. That song you did for them is probably the only reason they getting a chance to perform somewhere. I, I don't know, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know how that would play out. I know they at home wishing like, man, I wish this was a dream. Please let me wake up out of this. Because again, your boy, your boy provided a lot for some people who ordinarily, like you said, would not have been as maybe as big or as great. Because mm. and again, even with some artists that were really, you know, again, he worked with Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? Like right. he, he didn't work just work with even a, he worked with Michael Jackson and gave them memorable songs as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that would this will be interesting, man. Yeah, it will be. Um, I think one of the last points I want to hit is uh, something else I see pop up a lot in the um, in the forums and the threads and what have you. And that's uh, you know, we're um, people are real quick to bring up uh, the Elvis type situations, the um, Jerry Lee Lewis's of the world, and some of these uh, scenarios that we obviously know existed. Um, and occurred back before where white musicians and to be fair, some black musicians have done it as well. But in this, in this particular context, I'm speaking about the commentary that always refers to the Elvises and Jerry Lee Lewis's and, and speaks to it as if, okay, well, how it comes off to me is always, okay, they got away with it. I want to be able to get away with it too. That's just the way it, when they bring them up to try to validate, something chaos anybody else did that just always throws me off because that just sounds like a, I want to be able to be a pedophile freely too or some shit and I ain't never understood what that argument was supposed to mean but again in the overall context when people do bring that up as an argument what's your response to that for the Elvises and Jerry Lee Lewis's and I don't, I'm not sure because I don't know if Elvis actually married her when she was uh, underage so I don't want to make no bad accusations but we know it was a little funny looking Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of like this. The difference in like a thief and somebody that stole something is a thief got caught. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And in this situation with Kales, Kales sort of got caught, you know, and, and, you know, his situation is his situation because he was brought up on charges and he was convicted of those charges. Well, some of these other cats, maybe they did do it, but they, it, they got away with it you know, to our knowledge, or it did not, you know, it didn't right. affect them so much that, you know, they were convicted and then they were brought to justice and stuff like that. Well, well, Kale's, all of this happened with Kale's. Right. And again, this wasn't Kale's first rodeo in terms of, you know, being in court with this type of situation Man. because the tape was the first thing. And I, I personally always go back to that. This was some OJ shit here. Yeah. Like, we, we didn't get you for the first one. But you was dumb enough to do it again and do some other dumb shit. All right, we got you now. This is very OJ ish. And it's, and it's accountability. Let's be honest. I mean, I'm just keeping it real because of where we're from. We're mm -hmm. from the shy. We that's hometown, and we we want to, we've always represented it in that way. But at the same time, it was never gonna stop us from saying what was wrong, what what wasn't correct. Mm -hmm. Now, again, his music was his music, but we could we could separate the two. Mm -hmm. We could be like, yeah, man, that, that's a banger. Oh, man. Then it was wrong for what he did. You know, we could we could separate the two. Right, with right. Some of the Elvises and Jerry Lee Lewis's of the world and stuff like that. Maybe they did these things. But again, they got caught. I mean, they didn't get caught. Some people, you know, had problems with what they allegedly did or whatever. But again, it was alleged. This guy over here now ain't alleged because, like you said, yeah. He did this, you know, when the tape came out, okay, they said it wasn't him, all right, whatever. Boom, you go back and then you continue that cycle. So, I mean, you know, and then again, this was a lifetime documentary. Man, like, it was going to be hard to get away from that. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? National publicity, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we talked about before. I'd be lying if I said that this was not all very disappointing from all angles. This is disappointing, man. Just disappointing. It, it just, it's like, man, like, why am I even in a situation where I'm 
forced to have to think about, you know, when and where mm-hmm. I play his music. Like, huh? Like, we really here? But That's hey. definitely what do it for me is having to constantly be aware of it and have it and something that you keep in your mind. Um, it's, it's crazy, man. I'll be driving along and, you know, my preloaded joints, uh, the MP3s on the SD card to be playing. And, um, you know, it almost just depends on what day it is, the mood I'm in. There's a lot of different things, man, because like you said, like we were saying earlier, a joint like Sadie had come up. Well, perfect example, um, Born Into the 90s came on when I was uh, I was out the other night um, just driving. And I had to play it, man. I had to bump it because all I could think about when that song was playing was everything I thought about the first time I heard it. Like everything I was thinking about, like, oh, this cat is blowing. Okay, this cat doing it. Okay, he got a, he trying to incorporate this hip hop with it and he sang it. He sang in a song. And every time I hear a song like that, and some of the other ones that fall into that category, that's exactly what comes into my mind. The first thing I thought, something like slow dance. Come on, man. I'm thinking about listening to that on sitting on somebody's stoop, somebody's porch, about 1030 at night, the house party going on, July night, August night, it's about 80 degrees outside still. But you still hear this wanging from inside the house in the basement. This slow dance is beating down the block down there. Hey, man, look. And again, we always talk about the 90s. That's where this whole platform has come from. And that is it being the soundtrack to our lives. Mm -hmm. And when I be when I got into this, this, when I became of age where music started to really hit me in a in a in a in a way that I could do something with the feeling, he was at the beginning of it. It was the beginning of it. Slow dance, like you just said. That song right there, slow dance, it was unlike anything I had ever heard prior. Facts. Big like, facts. I had never heard anything like that. And it changed the way I listened to music going forward. And again, it's hard to take that away. Like, that's a part of my life. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's part of my life. Big facts. So I guess... To kind of summarize, um, wrap this conversation up. Um, there's so much context and nuance to this, and I definitely believe in giving everybody the individual room to to maneuver how they feel best based on their own Absolutely. perceptions and whatever their emotions are and experiences and what have you. Um, Definitely, because, I mean, if you're a woman that actually had to experience sexual assault or anything of that nature, I can't even imagine how you would feel when some of this stuff come on. So I completely 100 percent understand that. Uh, But I just also do think there is a part of this that's um, that's steeped in musicality, the music itself. And um, I just don't think that should just be washed away because of the situation. So, I mean, I got to agree with that. And, and, And on another note, if. I, I know I can speak for you, my brother. If I've said anything to offend anybody who's had to go through this, I apologize because that's not my intent. We're just trying to bring together some um, some clarity in what do we do with this music? Because, again, it's so much of it. And then it it's so it's such a big part of our lives and, you know, what we know and understand about music. Mm -hmm. And that's just and that's just our truth. Right, right, right. So yeah, that's um that's kind of where we stand right now with the whole um R. Kelly conversation and what to do with this music. Um we would love to hear everybody else's opinions about it. Uh drop it in the comments, let us know why you feel. Uh if you have any questions or subjects or just things uh, uh related to this, uh or anything really that you want us to actually sit down and wrap a taste on, particularly obviously if it's rooted in R and B, because that's what we're here to do. Um, let us know and also again we'd love to hear what you think about the music that he did with other people and whether or not you feel that should still be played yeah i guess i think i'm gonna do that in the poll tomorrow for real for real um so we're gonna get some uh real time results with that tomorrow and maybe we can you know go over those results maybe next time we sit down and wrap a taste and have a conversation so 
Um, yeah, man, I look like that's about it for us right now. Um, so again, for r and Nights, uh, where again, I'm not going to keep telling y'all this, but I am going to keep telling y'all this. r and is not old school. It is the school. Period. Yes, sir. Period. Facts. So again, this is Dre from r and Nights again. Shout out to Al signing out. Tied one right here. Signing out. Y'all know what to do. Subscribe. Quickly.